Hello there. Morning to you. Um, Ian Cuthcart, Thought for the Day, Flemington at Holeside Parish Church Minister. Um, and I think this is going to be the last week for Thoughts for the Day in as much as I'm going on holiday next week. And when we come back, I think it'll be the kind of run into the um, services starting what they're calling in-person services, um, which hopefully will be the 16th of August. Um, and so in the last week, we've been looking at this book um, simply because um, John Lennox is an emeritus professor of mathematics in Oxford. And one of the things you do get when smart people talk about faith is that you do tend to get perspectives on things that you haven't thought of before. And it's more just just to put the thought in your head. Well, it is thought for the day. It seems a good idea. And it was simply just to put the thought in your head because you will get people who say sometimes just to kind of fling a stick into the whole mix or sometimes they say it because they genuinely mean it and they have personal you know, experience of bereavement that sort of they hold they hold things like the coronavirus against God because it's you know you know a, a, an act of God and the coronavirus virus's existence is certainly very much a human creation and um, that's yesterday go back to yesterday if you want um, but as I say the reason why you read stuff from John Lennox I can't cover it all because even with this it's just um it's too there's too much in it, but he, well, I forgive me, I'm just going to read some of this stuff because it's just good. Um, to help us think about viruses, there are, here's an excerpt of an instructive article from the World Economic Forum. If you've got your own copy to hand, do just follow along. <laughs> this is written by Peter Pollard, an associate professor at the Australian Rivers Institute, Griffin University. He says, the word virus strikes terror into the hearts of most people, conjures up images of influenza, HIV, yellow fever, or Ebola. Of course, we worry about these viruses. They bring us disease and sometimes an excruciatingly painful death. But the 21 viral types that wreak havoc with the human body represent an insignificant fraction of the 100 million viral types on Earth. Most viruses are actually vital to our very existence. The sheer number of these good viruses is just in itself worth, as a concept, putting those two words together. A good virus. The, the sheer number of these good viruses is incredible. Their concentration in a product, productive lake or river, river is often 100 million per milliliter. That's more than four times the population of Australia squeezed into one quarter of a teaspoon of water. Viruses are not living organisms. They are simply bits of genetic material, DNA or RNA, covered in protein that, have, that behave like parasites. They attach to the target cell, the host, inject their genetic material and replicate themselves using the host cell's metabolic pathways. Then the new viruses break out of the cell, the cell explodes, releasing hundreds of viruses. It's the combination of highly bacteri high bacterial growth and viral infection that keeps ecosystems functioning. Thus viruses are a critical part of inorganic nutrient recycling. So while there are tiny and seem insignificant, viruses actually play an essential global role in the recycling of nutrients through food webs. We're only just now beginning to appreciate the extent of their positive impact on our survival. One thing is sure, viruses are our smallest unsung heroes. This is uh, likewise an article entitled Viruses Deserve a Better Reputation. This is Pennsylvania State University viral oncologist Marlon 
Rusnik, I'm guessing. She says viruses are essential to life and that at most 1%, that's a high estimate, of them are actually harmful to their hosts. It's just this basic idea, if God was a loving God, if God was there, how can he let a virus, how can viruses be a good, be in this world? A loving God would stop viruses. And turns out, no. A loving God needs viruses so that the planet itself can actually recover and keep on recycling. Because apparently the planet is a whole lot better at recycling nutrients than we are good at recycling generally. Uh, uh, he draws out the significance of this because he does another parallel thing. It's, it's um, the parallel uh, a few years ago when there was the massive um, tsunami in the Indian Ocean and hundreds of thousands of people were literally swept in this massive wave. There was an earthquake and the resulting tsunami killed lots and lots of people. That again was one of those um, how can a God be a loving God if he allows earthquakes? What good are earthquakes, especially when we're at the bottom of the sea and cause tidal waves and tsunamis? What? Why would a loving Heavenly Father allow earthquakes? I certainly have had the question myself, not only put to me, but I have had it in my own mind without any kind of clear response Listen to this. Turns out it's a very similar to the situation with the earthquakes. In their book Rare Earth, geologist Peter Ward and astronomer Donald Brownlee, both of the University of Washington, have a chapter entitled The Surprising Importance of Plate Tectonics. The plates, the tectonic plates that are kind of the outer shell of the planet move about. Those tectonic movements cause the earthquakes. The argument goes as follows. If the Earth's tectonic place ceased to move, mass extinction of life on Earth would eventually ensue. There are several reasons for this. Plate tectonics is essential for the formation of continents and maintenance of the balance between Earth, mountains, and the oceans, water. It also acts as a global thermostat. The tectonic movement recycling, there's that word again, I think it's, I think no matter where you stand on it yourself, you may actually have to come to the conclusion that God is actually quite a good recycler. Um, it acts as a global thermostat, these tectonic movements, recycling chemicals crucial to maintaining a uniformly balanced level of carbon dioxide. He goes into some details about why a balanced um, amount of carbon dioxide is not just a nice thing, not just a good thing. It's kind of like if it wasn't balanced, we wouldn't be here as human beings. Um, furthermore, Ward and Brownlee argue that plate tectonics maintains the Earth's magnetic field, which protects it from cosmic rays and would be fatal for life if it wasn't there. The conclusion is this. It may be that plate tectonics is the central requirement for life on a planet. And what is necessary for keeping and is necessary for keeping a world supplied with water? There are lots of people who feel intimidated by this virus. Something as bad and as negative and as straightforwardly intimidating is viewed as evidence that, well, there can't be a God because if there was, why are there viruses that kill people? Why are there tsunamis that drown people? Why, why are all these terrible, awful things happening? And the answer is, if you have eyes to see it and ears to hear, you recognise that the planet is actually as it needs to be to be a home for the vast majority of us. Is it good that people die because of some earthquake at the bottom of the sea that creates a tsunami? Of course not. 
is it good that this pandemic seem this this COVID nineteen seems to specifically target old folks? Of course not. But the reality is we focus on the negative, understandably so, and we don't see all the benefits that we get from earthquakes. We don't see all the benefits we get from viruses. Viruses which are in the overwhelming majority something which are a blessing to us, not a curse. Remember, when people come at you with index fingers, conviction in their voice, and say, it's obvious a loving God wouldn't allow a virus. Well, he allows a whole lot of other viruses which are really positive and do good. Why does God not get the credit for them? Why do all the positives from earthquakes not count on God's favour? Why is it it's just always the negatives that get pointed to and say, how's a loving God allow that? It's the loving God that makes the overwhelming presence of viruses such a beneficial thing. Because God knew what he was doing when he made the planet. He knew what he was doing with planet Earth. And he knew what he was doing with you and with me. Contemplate buying it because it is, as you can see, a short read. You'll read it in a night if you're a slow reader. Um, and I'm only taking the bit, the iceberg that you can see, the tiny wee tips of it. Um, it's just really well done. And it just comes at stuff from a really helpful angle because the guy is really smart and he's really, really assured. But above all else, he's a Christian who helps you recognise we really do love. We really do get to worship a loving God. And you can see his love for this planet and for his creation in viruses and in earthquakes. You just have to have a brain sufficiently open to the reality of both science and God to see both. Go with God, because I'm really sure God goes with you.